Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. I'm uh, sitting here in my uh, Ford Ranger electric truck, the uh, 1998 one, the, uh, the original year that this came out. And, you know, I already did kind of a teaser and, you know, sort of a tongue-in-cheek introduction. But, you know, some people had some questions about uh, these two Ford Rangers that I picked up. Uh, you know, maybe there's not a lot of information out there. A lot of people, I guess, weren't even uh, really aware that these were factory-built electric cars from 20 years ago. Uh, and, you know, so I kind of just wanted to give... You know, just a really basic overview uh, because I want to keep these videos short. I want to keep them interesting, and there's a lot to do um, with these with these trucks. Uh, and you know, I just kind of wanted to give an overview of uh, you know basically what they were from factory and where I plan to go with them. And then I'll go in depth into a lot more of like the systems and the layout and uh, you know some of the actual workings and goings on of the truck uh, in other videos. But like I said, I want to keep these more sort of short, uh, topical, interesting. Yeah, just sort of an overview. And like I said, when I was first sort of teasing what I got, I had mentioned that this is uh, an EV that I had wanted since it first came out, and. You know, when this came out, it was one of the one of the first uh, modern electric vehicles to come from a major manufacturer, uh, and uh, so everybody knew about the EV1, right? When it came out, right? I mean, it it was famous. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's twin brother Danny DeVito drove one. We all knew about it, right? And you know, I think GM they get way too much credit for killing quote unquote the electric car uh, but i don't think they get enough credit for bringing the electric car into the the public spotlight right you know you can go into the politics of it and you know i know a lot of people said that oh the you know they killed the electric vehicle by you know not pursuing NIM battery technology, the nickel metal hydride, which is the same later technology that Ford uh, used in this electric Ranger. Basically, the automaker said it wasn't viable for an electric vehicle, for a consumer level electric vehicle. And I actually agree with that. It wasn't uh, because, you know, despite its advantages over lead acid, uh, nickel metal hydride batteries only had about a 500 you know cycle life and that's just not enough for a consumer product right uh, the white uh, ranger behind me it had 34 35,000 miles and it's a nim uh, original battery right uh, well that was about the lifespan if you figure you're going 60 70 miles on average per cycle and you only get 500 cycles you're only looking at a 30 to 40,000 mile uh, overall lifetime of the battery, right? And yeah, there are ways to recover that capacity a little bit, but you're really, you know, you're spending a lot of time and a lot of effort for very little gain. So I actually don't subscribe to this idea that the automakers were just trying to kill electric vehicles. I think they truly believed uh, that that technology wasn't viable, and I kind of agree with them, especially, uh, you know, for me, it's a little bit of a benefit of hindsight, but looking now at how the uh, nickel manganese cobalt uh, lithium batteries compare, you know, there is no comparison, right? Um, so, I mean, I'm literally four times the NIM life cycle uh, in terms of miles on my Chevy Bolt EV, and I still have less than 10% uh, battery, you know, battery degradation. Uh, and that's actually maybe something I want to I mention is, yeah, these aren't in running condition. So I basically, I got two uh, Ranger EVs for the price of one. I really kind of got one and a half Ranger EVs. Uh, neither one have batteries. This one was originally a, a, a lead acid. The other one, the white one, was originally a NIM. So I have two different configurations and they are actually different. And I'm basically going to have to get them into running condition. And the other thing is too, they, they have some issues that I wasn't aware of at the time I agreed to purchase them, right? I knew the, the white one was missing a front bumper. These are 90s uh, early 2000s Rangers. Parts for them that aren't related to the electronics 
going to be super easy to find. I'm not worried about that. Unfortunately, this red one, despite only having about 15,000 miles on it, does have some rusting and pitting on the frame. Now, it's not to the point that I think it's causing structural issues. I'll walk you through the process when I do that. I'm going to have to pull the bed probably. And then, of course, I'm going to have to pull the packs. And I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do uh, with the battery packs, right? And how I'm going to address that because you cannot get factory spec batteries for it anymore. Uh, and I've mentioned too, my ultimate goal is to maybe modernize these so that they're usable. And that means updating the battery. I, I want really a minimum of about 150 miles of driving range. And I think in order to get these up to 200 miles of driving range, based on what I'm seeing, you're going to need uh, 200 amp hours uh, of capacity at the basically a 300 uh, volt nominal pack voltage. So I'm going to have to work out all of the details and how I'm going to do all of that. And then of course I want to modernize the charging system too. It has these old Avcon uh, charging heads and uh, you know this is fine I have an adapter for it uh, but I, I don't want to have to use an adapter when we already have a universal standard which this is the original uh, J1772 standard so it actually communicates with the same protocol so I don't want to have to update any of that uh, of course the white one also is going to need new tires uh, probably get low rolling resistance tires it originally came with low rolling resistance tires but it no longer has those some people also had a uh, question questions about the actual powertrain for these Ford Rangers, and I'll dive into those in more detail as well. Uh, Ford actually did a really good job with them originally, and I'm going to have to maybe update the uh, Wikipedia page. It lists it as having a 3 to 1 gear reduction ratio, which would have made these a dog. It actually turns out that it has a, about a 12.5 to 1 a gear reduction ratio with a motor that can rev up to 13,000 RPM. So those are good things. Now at that point in time nobody was using permanent magnet AC motors so what you have are these induction motors. This is basically an early version of what Tesla was using uh, in their Roadster and uh, Tesla Model S when they first came out. Induction motors, you know, they have a lot of benefits, right? Uh, you know, because it's sort of a slip motor, it will allow p uh, towing even though the Ranger is not rated for towing. Uh, someone has already uh, been able to tow like a 3,000 pound trailer with it. Uh, you're going to need more battery capacity. You're going to need a bigger battery. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it is capable of towing thanks to those induction motors, but induction motors are really inefficient. It also, this is a weird thing, and most major automakers don't do this, uh, but they actually put the rated power, Ford actually listed the rated power rather than the peak power. So even, um, you know, the Idaho laboratories, when they do their testing, uh, they were able to get close to 90 kilowatts out of this motor even though it's rated I believe it's 67 kilowatts so it sounds like it's really low right like a hundred horsepower or something but it can actually output quite a bit more than that nearly 130 140 uh, peak horsepower so uh, you know the, this is actually a bit more capable uh, than I thought it was and it kind of had to be because the lead acid batteries by themselves literally weighed a ton right 2,000 pounds so um, you know I'm looking to see if I can get the weight of the batteries down um, and then of course maybe there's a future possibility of adding like all-wheel drive four-wheel drive or something like that I, I don't know if I would switch out the induction motor with a permanent magnet AC motor uh, but you know there's a lot of wasted energy these are really inefficient motors uh, induction motors are good for certain things but efficiency is not one of them you actually need a full-size automobile radiator like you'd have with an internal combustion engine vehicle just to run uh, these induction motors uh, and that's all of that heat that you're you're sloughing off uh, that's wasted you know energy out of the battery that is not going toward propelling the vehicle uh, yeah there's a lot to do here you know I'm gonna have to at the very least do a, a, a tire change on the white one I'm gonna have to address the rust issue uh, in this red one uh, and then just take it one step at a time uh, source source some batteries yeah all told there's gonna be a lot of work here and uh, I'm going to be doing regular updates and some of them are going to actually be work on the truck and then some of them are actually going to be uh, 
um, just informational and just basically kind of sharing some knowledge about just what they are and what I'm doing with them and where they are in their upgrade path. So um, I hope this was a little bit more informative. I, I hope it was helpful. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'll dive into to more of the technical details in other videos, but I want to keep those kind of topical um, so we can, you know, focus on the powertrain, focus on um, weight reduction, focus on, on things like that. Um, you know, how the different materials Ford used, um, the battery, uh, the battery configuration, the charger, that sort of thing. Those those technical details I might jump into uh, in individual videos. So uh, yeah, let me know what you still kind of want to know about these. You know, have you had any experience with these Ford Ranger electrics? Are you you know looking forward uh, to being able to buy a new modern uh, electric truck? Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, there are more on the way and uh, thank you for watching.